Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use just a little bit of custom CSS to create an equal height summary block in your Squarespace website. Now the codes I'm using today are listed in the description below, and these codes will work in version 7 or version 7.1. So either version you're in, you're still watching the right tutorial, and these are the codes for you. Now what we're going to be doing today is making a summary block, an on-page content block that's made up of information from a blog on your website. We're going to make that an equal height and then we're going to scoot that read more link down to the same position in every single one of those blocks. So let's hop into my demo site and I'll show you exactly how this works. So here we are in my demo site and I have a summary block right here and I have different excerpts for these three blogs and read more links right underneath them. Let me show you really quickly how I added this to my page so you'll understand how to do it on your own site before we get into that code. So I'm just going to select edit up here because I'm in 7.1. But if we click on a little droplet here in either version of Squarespace, you'll be able to just search for a summary. And I'm going to go ahead and use a grid summary for this one. This can also work for a carousel as well, but I prefer using the grid. So I'm going to grab sample blog and then over here under the layout, I'm going to go ahead and move that metadata up there for me, just where I want it to be. Change this to whatever you'd like for your own website. Stretch it out to an equal width column there, anything that you're comfortable with. Over here under display, I want to make sure my read more link is enabled because that's a part of this tutorial. You don't have to have it, but this is how you enable it if you'd like to put that on your particular summary block. Okay? Awesome, so play around with that layout all you want, number of items you wanna have there, definitely have fun with this one. This is just the a sample of the layout I'm using in this particular example here. All right, I'll select apply, and we'll go ahead and delete this old one because it's the exact same thing. There we go. All right, up here I'm gonna go ahead and select save. We have our summary block for that blog on our site with the title, the excerpt, and the read more button available, and the thumbnail, but that part's obvious. All right, let's get into the code. Down here, I've got a breakdown of the code we're going to add, and we'll do it step by step in our custom CSS panel. So I'm going to navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS. Now, right off the bat, I went ahead and created this one just to give us a border to the summary. So you see what we're working with. This just says summary item, give it a border. You can use this to add a background too, if you'd like. Let's say uh, we add background. Um, let's go with a nice light blue. There we go. Now it's got a background. You can see what we're working with. Now, personally, for my own design aesthetic, I don't like how the text just bumps right up to the edge of that summary content there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this line and give a little bit of padding to the left of that text. There we go. Now it looks just not quite right next to that border, so I've got a little more wiggle room happening there. Alrighty. Now after that, this part's pretty important. This part says only on screens bigger than mobile do you give it this height and then we'll uh, change the read more link as well. So let me show you this without that code first. The first thing we're gonna add is say, okay, let's make them all equal height. Here I put 55 view height. While that's great on my desktop and it looks the way I want it to, all equal height, when I go to mobile, it looks terrible. <laughs> it scrunches things up in a weird way. This one, it's barely in the container. That one seems okay. That one doesn't have enough room. That just looks awful. So what I like to do is add this little media query line to the top of it that says only on screens bigger than mobile do you need to change the height. So let's go ahead and add that code and I'll end a closing bracket there. And now let's take a look at it. Same on desktop and on mobile, it's reset so it fits the individual length of that excerpt there. So they're not equal height anymore. They're gonna fit the content. Personally, I like that view a lot better. So that's why we have this extra line of code right here that says only on screens that are larger than mobile. Now, last but not least, I added one more line to have us move that read more link down to the bottom. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it before that final bracket there so it's still a part of this media query, okay? Now let's scroll up and take a look. Now, our read more button has moved down to the bottom. Let me explain this one to you a little bit. This position absolute, make sure that it's in a relative position to the other content inside that summary block. So then I can add a little bit of a top uh, spacing for it there, okay? So let me show you. If we remove this position line, it's not gonna do anything with that top element there. It's not gonna have anything to compare it to. 
So if I add position absolute, it's going to be relative to other content in that block. And that lets me put it at the exact same spot in every single summary item. Now, again, we have this insider media query in between those brackets there. So when we go to mobile, the read more button is going to stay exactly where it's supposed to in relation to that blog summary excerpt that we're featuring in the little thumbnail there. Okay. So there we go. Let's break down this code one more time. This first one, we added a border and I went ahead and threw in a background as well so we could see what we're working with. The second one gave just a little bit of padding to that text so it scooted away from the edge of that container. Now after that, we said only do this on screens bigger than a phone. I want you to give it this height and I want you to take the read more link and make sure it's related to the other content in there with 50 VH at the top of it. Now all those VH values you can change. Let's say you want it to be 65 in height, so it's way longer and change this up to 55 if you feel like it, or let's say 48 to scoot it way closer to the top. You can get really creative with these. Just make sure that they suit your own site style. That's not exactly the style I'd go for. So I'm going to leave this at 55, but you change around those VH values. Okay. You can also use a specific PX value if you'd like to, and I'll make a note of that in the content below. Regardless of what you do, when you're done with this, select save and you'll be good to go. Now, if you do want to apply this code to a single page on your website, I have a tutorial to walk you through that. Link is in the description below. You'll just use either an on-page code block or page header code injection. But for the most part, if you're doing this for your whole website here, just head on over to your custom CSS section under design, custom CSS. Again, codes are below. Get creative with those borders and background colors and play around with that VH value to make sure it's the right height for you, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.